This Ag Business Update brought to you by American Implement, indebted to the past, committed to the future. In a moment, Dr. Roger McCohen. Would you like to see something done about high gas prices and low unemployment? Western Place Energy in Campus, Kansas is doing something about it. They're a proud part of Growth Energy, America's ethanol supporters, and they employ 38 people and will be adding more following the expansion. Ethanol fuel not only reduces the cost of regular gasoline, it's good for the environment and keeps money right here in the United States while supporting local rural jobs. Western Plains Energy, doing something for the future. When you've had a best friend for over 50 years, you develop a trust. And the Scott Co-op has been a trusted rural friend since 1957. A co-op keeps money in the area, doing business for and with their members. And that helps keep their hometown thriving with keeping money in the community. Scott Co-op is not just an elevator. It's the rural way of doing business. So when you see an elevator, remember your friends at Scott Co-op. Time once again for our monthly conversation with Dr. Roger McCone from the Washburn School of Law. He is a uh, ag law and tax law specialist. Dr. McCone, good to see you again. Good to be with you, Ken. A couple of topics we want to talk about. The first one, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. Sounded like it was a wonderful thing, but as we dig into it, uh, there's some real concerns for agriculture producers. Well, uh, there are a couple of effects here, uh, and it's really produced by all of this uh, or caused by all of this inflation uh, in, in the economy. And it has to do with estate plans. Now, we're going to see the largest single year increase in the basic exclusion amount uh, from 2022 to 2023. It's going to jump $860,000 because of inflation this next year. And that's uh, that's that's going to take the exemption to twelve point nine two million dollars per decedent next year. And so one effect of inflation is the because the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act effectively doubled that exclusion amount going from five to ten million and then indexing it for inflation for each year through twenty twenty five. We're going to see the biggest one year increase in the history of the federal estate tax exclusion. And in fact, the one year increase by itself is larger than what the exclusion amount was in total when I started practicing. And so uh, we're going to have very, very few uh, farm and ranch estates that will be subject to federal estate tax. But the, the other aspect of inflation that's in the economy right now is that it's increasing land values. We're seeing, uh, if you look at Iowa land values, it's kind of a, a benchmark uh, for many parts of the country and the Midwest and in some parts of the Plain States. We've seen a doubling of land values the last two and a half years. And uh, that increases one's wealth, that increases one's estate. So if I have a thousand acres of 15,000 per acre land, that's $15 million worth of an estate just on land right there. And I'm already over the 12.92 next year. So uh, yeah, there, there's some of that effect. Plus the other impact on inflation uh, that inflation does is uh, the, the stock market has taken a dive. And so what funds you have in retirement accounts uh, have lost quite a bit. Plus any remaining funds that you have, the cash now is worth less because it's not buying as much due to inflation. So there are a lot of things to think about it concerning estate planning and financial planning because of inflation in the economy. Right. And I think that's the big thing about the challenges is those that have made estate plans, you got to scrap them and start all over now? Well, you don't have to scrap them, but you really have to be aware of what's happening in, in the economy with respect to your potential estate and your financial issues. And I think one of the, one of the aspects, uh, Ken, of this dramatic increase in the exemption equivalent of the unified credit, that basic exclusion amount, has been it's caused some people to think that they don't have to do any estate planning at all because they don't have a tax problem. Well, there are more things to estate planning than just tax. Uh, and so you don't want to forget the basic things, a basic will, a basic trust. What if I have an on-farm heir? What if I have off-farm heirs? What if I need long-term health care? Uh, do I have a financial power in place? Do I have a health care power in place? Don't forget the basics. None of us knows uh, how much sand is left in the top of our hourglass. So uh, it's a good thing to get started on it and keep an eye on that, uh, even though you think you don't have, and you probably don't have any federal estate tax problem. 
Dr. Roger McCon from the Washburn School of Law is joining us. We're going to take a break, come back, and talk more about some possible tax implications due to the weather. We'll do that in just a moment. SNS Trailer Sales with two locations in Ness City, Kansas, is where everybody goes to buy or rent trailers. They feature the all new, all aluminum Mauer grain trailer with all of the electric options, the easy to load detached trailers, and a huge stock of header trailers. At the west location, you'll find bumper poles, goose necks, and oil field specialty trailers, along with flat and utility beds for pickups. SNS Trailer Sales in Ness City and on the web, but remember, you do have to spell out the end. The cost of everything has gone up dramatically over the last 75 years. With one exception, keeping electricity affordable. Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life, your touchstone energy cooperative. And joining us is Dr. Roger McCone from the Washburn School of Law. It's our monthly conversation with him. And uh, Dr. McCone, another thing we want to uh, talk about is we know that uh, much of the Great Plains has been affected by drought and uh, not only this year, but multiple years, but not every county in, 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 the, in the tax code. The federal government allows for some relief, but not every county in Kansas qualifies, and that may surprise some. Yeah, um, th there are two provisions that we work with in the tax code when we have a, a livestock owner that sells more livestock in any given year than they normally would. So this these provisions apply to the excess sales. And this is a really big issue this year across the Plain States uh, and uh, in other parts further west in the country because of prolonged drought. We're seeing a dramatic reduction in the cattle herd uh, in particular, and lots of sales. Uh, and uh, again, a lot of farmers are selling livestock more than they, uh, to a great extent, more than they normally would. In fact, I just learned late uh, last week that uh, at a sale barn in Southeast Kansas, the sale started at 11 a.m. and didn't end until 6 a.m. the next day. Uh, and they continue all the way through the night to get all the cattle through. That's how, uh, that's how important this issue is right now. Well, when you sell a livestock, again, you're going to trigger some income. And the question is, uh, are there ways that I can defer reporting that income? And there really are two ways under the tax code. And one of those uh, is uh, allows for a one-year deferral. And the other one is and it allows you to treat the sale of the excess as what we call an involuntary conversion. Now, if it's an involuntary conversion, I have to replace those animals with like kind livestock within a certain time frame. Normally, that's four years. But by the end of September every year, IRS comes out with its list of the so-called drought counties. And in those areas, a producer uh, gets an additional year with which to replace their live, excess livestock that were sold and defer the gain. So if I had uh, sold excess livestock in previous years and my time frame was about to run out at the end of 2022, if you're in one of these listed counties, then you have until the end of 2023. Mm -hmm. And that announcement just came out by IRS uh, right at the end of September. Okay. Well, Dr. McCohen, there are always a number of issues that are going on, and these two very important to uh, to farmers and ranchers and landowners alike. So how can folks learn more? Because, boy, it's a couple of minutes is yeah. enough to get into those. So how can they read more about it, learn more about these issues? Well, I, I talk about these on my blog. I write about these and publish articles on my blog, and that's at washburnlaw.edu backslash Walter, W-A-L-T-R. All right, Dr. McCohen, as always, thanks for your time. Thank you, Ken. Dr. Roger McCohen for the Washburn School of Law, a ag and tax law specialist. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up in just a moment. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation has been around a long time, and a lot of folks have trusted them to design, build, and service all sizes of commercial and on-farm storage for grain and equipment. Wolfter is also known for their outstanding irrigation division where they stock a complete selection of nozzles, regulators, drops, gear drives, electrical, and structure components. Looking for an electric motor? Wolfter has a large selection in single and three phase. Next time, reach out to the pros who have decades of experience at taking care of business the right way. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation.
KBUF Radio has ag information for you weekdays beginning at 6 with Agriculture Today. Then from 7 to 11, it's the KBUF Morning Show. We talk a lot about the markets as well as have interviews with newsmakers, as well weather and a whole lot of ag information to help you make good decisions on the farm and ranch. Plus, Max Armstrong and his morning commentaries. You can follow along at westernkansasnews.com, even listen to any Western Kansas broadcast station live on that website. We also have a couple social media channels you might want to check out as well. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching.